Hello guys, welcome back to Year Star Technical Channel. In the last video, we have understood some basic knowledge of WebRTC. In today's video, we will focus more on signaling and we will talk about what is signaling, talk about SDP, talk about signaling server selections in today's video. So WebRTC can mainly realize real-time peer-to-peer data transmission and peer-to-peer -peer cannot transmit to each other when they do not know each other at the beginning. So it is necessary to tell each other who the other party is through signaling to achieve the establishment of the connection. The figure shows the basic architecture of WebRTC. Two endpoints sends their respective devices information to a center, which we call signaling server, to do the unified processing. We call this information SDP, and we will talk about what SDP is below. And this process is called signaling, so through a third-party server, two endpoints can learn about each other and then be able to transmit information to each other. SDP, whose full name is Session Description Protocol, before a session is established, we need some information about both endpoints to establish the session. This is why SDP exists here. The whole SDP content will mainly consist of session description, time description, and media description, which are the three major categories. And the basic format of SDP is very simple. The format of each row is according to the following, character equal to value, where character is a lowercase single word representing a specific attribute, and value is a structured text description of the attribute encoded in UTF-8. Here I use an example to explain the definitions of each line. V means protocol version and it is format as a number, here you can see a zero there. And O means session initiator, the format is as follows. And the meanings of the variables are as follows. S means session name and this line can be blank. C means connection information, it is not required if it is including in the media block. T means session activity time, the format is as follows. As in the example above, a stop time of 0 means that the communication is not yet finished, and a start time of 0 means that the communication is permanent. M means multimedia descriptions, and you can see the format here. Also with the meanings of variables. The last line is A line. A means attribute of the media, and this is usually describes the attribute of the media referred to the M line. In this example, the media type is audio, the part that sends the media stream is 49170, and the transfer protocol is RTP. And here the media payload type, the following example you see three numbers, 0, 8, 97, they represent the corresponding type PCMU, PCMA, ILBC, which also corresponds to the three codecs of the following line. As I mentioned above, the main function of signaling server is to exchange device information between endpoints. In WebRTC, there is no standard for the signaling delivery mechanism. So why WebRTC does not establish such a standard? Because in fact, when two endpoints are exchanging messages, signaling server is not involved. Here I suppose you know the other party's part. This means you can find the location of an application in the other party's computer. And then you know about the IP, that means you know where the other party is. So then you can actually communicate with each other without the server. That is to say, you can choose the way you feel appropriate, such as HTTP request or WebSocket to transmit signaling information to the endpoint. If you use HTTP request, then you may need to use the polling method. Polling is an early web solution through the client to send requests to the server at certain intervals. By sending frequent requests in this way to keep the data synchronized, but it also consumes a lot of transmission consumptions of the client. Each endpoint will use polling to pull the signaling server regularly to see if anyone wants to have a conversation. If the answer is yes, they will exchange HTTP and establish a new peer-to-peer -peer connection. Another way is WebSocket. The client side will send a request containing WebSocket content to the server. After the request is verified, the client and the server will establish a TCP connection 
to achieve two-way data exchange. So it is not necessary to use polling to visit the signaling server regularly, but only when you receive a session request, it will automatically push it to the user's browser. There are still other ways such as SMPP and so on. Here we are not going to list one by one. So today we have talked about the STP, talk about the signaling server. But actually after the peer-to-peer -peer connection is established, there are still some difficulties in transferring data. So we will talk about STAM, talk about down ICE, even net settings in the next video. So guys, if you enjoyed these videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and come back here next week.